So to decorate our base, I'm going to start with putting some cardstock just around the edges. And I've cut some strips that are an inch and five eighths inch wide. That allows for the seven eighths inch height, which is the three quarters inch plus two widths of chipboard, which in my case is seven eighths plus three eighths inch on either side. And then we can just use those to go around the sides here. And then I've also cut a small piece, uh, those are green, that I'll use for the majority. And then for this place right in here in front where this, the path comes in, I'm just going to use a little piece of brown cardstock that comes up to the edges of this angle. And it's basically a matter of just making relief cuts for this uh, one that's in the front here. I have to make a few more relief cuts just to go around these angles and allow for that thinner place. But I'll just do that by making using either my craft knife and make some just some little. I'm going to start with just on the bottom here, making some little relief cuts that are about an eighth of an inch apart. I should have done this before I removed uh, the score tape backing on these top ones because now of course it's sticking to my fingers and making it a little more challenging, but that's okay. Okay, so once we have that done, I can take this. Hopefully this will show up okay on camera. I'm just kind of bending these in. And then I'll line this up, like I said, with the edge and just kind of work it away around. And then all of these on the bottom can just spread out and we can come back at the end and burnish that. And then on the inside where we have to allow for this dip and that it's only a quarter inch, I'll just we can probably do a little trimming there. I'll probably come in here, just make a cut into those two corners. And then those two can just wrap up this way. Because they're square, so we don't need to worry about making any relief cuts for those. But here where this is curved, we'll have to make some cuts there. And I'll just come in here with my scissors and make some snips. And then I can just rub that. Obviously you don't need all of this length, so if you want to give this just a little bit of a haircut here, you can. And then we'll come back and burnish all that in place. Then I've got three strips that I've cut at 12 inch and then I think I'll just need another little short piece to kind of go around the edges here. I'll just hold this up and kind of mark where I need to make relief cuts and get those made before I go to stick that on. But I'll just complete that all around the remaining edges here. So I finished putting on the edging all the way around as you can see and I just made sure to burnish everything really well and now my next step will be to glue down the acorn house and then we can work on the back porch and probably the front steps next.
the acorn house is going to have a back porch and included in the cutting guide are templates to use to create the back porch. Now the porch will have a floor and it has two layers and it will have a railing which also has two layers. Now the easiest way to cut this is to cut some one and three quarter by three inch rectangles of chipboard and that way they'll all be the same size and then if you cut out even though I've included a template for both the floor bottom and the top what I would suggest is you cut one like say the floor bottom and then use that as a template for the top and then once you get the top made you can use that as a template for the railings and the only difference with the railings is if you cut out uh, let's say you cut out three floor tops to use as um, one for the floor top and two for the railings when you cut it out for two of them just use a 3 8 inch uh, mark on your ruler to cut out the uh, a railing that is only 3 inch 3 eighths of an inch wide. That way everything will match up uh, very very nicely. Now the each the floor bottom has two larger holes 3 16 inch holes to use for piers that will hold it up um, off of the base platform and the floor top has seven little 1 8 inch holes and those are to use for, to as the um, I forget the proper name the, the sticks for the for the railings so I've created my um, pieces here and let's start with the bottom and it's going to go together like this now I think what I want to I think I want to try to wrap the edges with paper so I'm going to try this and we'll see how it works but I'll first put the paper on the top then re-punch these holes then glue it to the bottom and wrap around the edges making sure to avoid where these holes are for the um, piers so let me do that So I cut a piece of pattern paper that is four inches by two and a quarter and I put the edges even with the, the pointy ends, the ends that are going to go next to the house. And I put score tape on the entire back here and then I repunched all of the holes. Hopefully you can see that. Um, just just kind of lined up my crocodile with the holes that were already there and now I'm going to glue the the other piece here to it and then continue to wrap around uh, not this back edge here and then I'll just try to avoid where these holes are here for the piers so I have the bottom of my back porch all wrapped here and now I'm going to, I've cut some little 1 8 inch um, skewers about 3 quarters of an inch long. You may want to measure, yours may be different, uh, you may need a different length than I have. Just kind of try out your pieces and see, see what works. I'm just going to glue these in. I did co color them with a a little bit of distress marker. Try to get them standing straight as you go around here. Then we can just set that aside to dry while we work on uh, covering the railing. Now for the railing I've again cut a piece of pattern paper that is four by two and a quarter and backed it with score tape but here the paper needs to go on the side that doesn't have the holes in it because the holes are on the bottom so that they can fit on top of the little posts. So we'll go ahead and glue our two pieces together to start with.
And I made sure when I cut all these out to mark which sides went together so that in case they weren't cut perfectly symmetrically, everything would still um, fit together in the end. So now I'm going to remove my tape backing. And I'll just center this as best I can. And again, we're going to want to wrap, but make sure this time we avoid those holes. So we'll wrap from both sides here and just do some judicious cutting. This part, these two ends here, can be cut flush because they will go right up against the house. There's no need to wrap those. Here's the railing covered, and I do admit that it's a bit, bit fiddly to keep these holes uncovered. And I, if I was going to do this again, I would wrap the inside first and then wrap the outside. Um, I think it will not show too much here, but um, that's just what I would, would do. And now it's just a matter of putting some glue on and fitting all of these little posts into there. So here is our little back porch. And I'll just set that aside to dry and then we can attach it to the main acorn house. Before we put the front steps in, I want to cover this area with just some base paper. And it probably would have been smarter to put that on before I got the house on here. But uh, I'm able to work around it. So first thing I want to do is put another piece of brown paper down here in the path area. And I cut a piece that is, oh, just shy of three and a quarter and... It is about, oh, I think I cut it about four inches long. And then I scored at five eighths of an inch, and then at two and five eighths of an inch, and then I trimmed back to five eighths of an inch from that fold. Now you could just cut that to uh, two inches plus five, two at five and eighth would be three and a, three and a quarter. And it probably, and then you could trim down a little bit. You don't want it to come over these edges too much. And so then uh, after those scores, I made a score at 1 8 inch. I turned it 90 degrees, made a score at 1 8 inch and a score at half an inch. And then I made two slits. One, I'll fold these up so you can see. I cut in on those corners there. And then I did a dry fit with it pushed all the way back in here so that I could cut this curve around the front. And that's, that's when it would have been easier if the, house, if the house wasn't already on here. But you can make do. And uh, I've got score tape all around that. So I'm going to put that down. You, of course, could choose any color. I think this will make my path stand out a little bit more, and that's what I wanted to. So I'm, I'm folding it up like this to begin with, and getting making sure I get it. Got to watch out with all this sticky score tape here. Get it pushed all the way in the back and centered here. And then before I put the two side flaps down, I'm going to make sure I've got these guys. And I did make a little release cut. I think you'll be able to see it when I push this part down into that corner there. And get out my bone folder and make sure everything is 
down. There we go. And then can put this top one up here and smooth these edges. So that makes a nice base for our path. Then I just cut a piece of green. Well, first I just took a piece of lightweight paper and made a pattern to fit around here. And I'm going to go as far as four of our panels here so that this piece will fit right in here like that and go underneath the steps. So all I did was cut a pattern and measure it to length and then cut it out of my uh, green cardstock with some score tape around it again. Of course this would have been easier with the, if the acorn house wasn't on you could have just slipped this under underneath there and not had to make a pattern but it's easy enough so I'll just give that a burnish all right so now we're prepped for our steps I've added some additional templates here to this page that had the back porch on it beforehand and here you can see we've got a template for the top of the top step and a template for the top of the bottom step and again I would cut out these two rectangles that are noted here one and one half by three and one and one quarter by two and five eighths and then you can use the templates to trace around. Now as you cut these out I would fit them around the acorn house and make sure that um, they are going to fit. You know it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't get caught up in perfection. You know but but they should fit fairly nicely there. And so those that's the top and this is all medium weight chipboard and then um, we have I have some of these pieces cut out already. Just kind of test fitting them. So on the top step, step sides it says 5 eighths of an inch by 6 inches and then see the video. So what we want to do, we're, we need three, three sides to this and we have one that is 2.5 inches long by 5 inches wide that goes in the middle and then cut for the ends two pieces that are again five eighths of an inch tall by one and one quarter inch tall and then mark in an eighth of an inch on one of the long sides and draw, draw a diagonal so that you have a little angle cut on either end and then we're going to join these I just have them temporarily joined but we'll join those with um, some of our cardstock joining strips so that will be the top step sides and these uh, come together with the two and a half inch side um, inside of the two end pieces so you will want to glue that and you can reinforce it like I said with the cardstock joining strip and then that will sit right on top of the edges of our bottom piece the longer sides uh, that we cut here fit onto the bottom and then just glue that and set that to dry and our top, top step um, we won't put that on till we put that over onto the house it's going to overlap just to give a nice shadow along the edge so um, those are our top step pieces the second step, we're going to make a little four-sided box out of quarter-inch uh, quarter strips of medium weight chipboard and the sizes are here. Uh, we have basically two at one quarter inch and two at two and a half and you just join them into a little box. I'm going to just join them with a strip of cardstock joining strip, um, cardstock joining uh, strip 
that is just slightly smaller than a quarter inch wide that I can run all the way around the inside perimeter to reinforce that. And that will be the sides for the top step, I mean the second step, and then the second step itself is one half inch by two and seven eighths and we won't put that on until we assemble it. Again we have a shadow for that. The third step um, it only has a top and I'll show you that. Uh, one half inch by two and three quarters and then the bottom step the top is one half by two and one quarter and then we just have a couple of little three eighths inch wide risers that are both cut two inches long. So I'm going to do some sub assembly and then we'll be back to put our decorative paper on. While the glue is setting up on the two pieces I needed to construct, this is the top step. I have the bottom and the three sides on that and then this is the second step, the quarter inch strips. And you can see that I think in here that I have added just a couple of little spacers. This is so uh, long and narrow just to give it a little more stability I cut a couple of little quarter inch by quarter inch pieces and glued them in the center and letting that set up. Now all of the um, all of the pieces are just going the the, the tops are just going to be um, they're not going to be wrapped the edges will show so I'm just going to take a brown marker and hit these edges. Um, you don't have to really do these inside ones. Um, they might show a little bit, but I'm just going to do that to all four of the steps. I'm going to do it to all four sides just so I don't have to remember uh, you know, which side I didn't do. Only three sides will show. And then on the riser, which I glued the two pieces uh, together, two little 3 8 inch by 2 inches. I'm just going to take the marker around all of those edges as well. Now we'll just wait for our glue to finish setting up. And while that glue is setting up, I'm going to cover my um, my step, tops of my steps. I've chosen this paper. It's called Primrose Cottage, I think, because that's it's the reverse side. I'm going to use this side with the writing uh, for my steps, and so I will do that. I finished covering the tops of my steps with my pattern paper and I did use a little of my brown distress ink around the edges just to um, give them a little extra color. I've also cut a little strip of brown uh, cardstock that is two and a quarter inches by a half inch and this is an optional piece. I'll show you what we'll use that for in a minute. And then I've cut two strips of pattern paper here. Uh, one is one quarter inch wide, just long enough to make sure it goes around three sides and a little bit on the back of our second step. And then this piece is a little bit over five eighths, excuse me, five eighths of an inch tall because uh, we have to allow for the thickness of this chipboard. We want to wrap around all three sides and this was five eighths plus a sixteenth. So this is five-eighths plus a sixteenth as well. So I'll do that wrapping and then we'll be back. I've got this propped up a little bit so hopefully you can see what's going on here with the assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this little strip of brown cardstock that I made and I'm going to put it right under the base of these doors. And that's because the top step does not come all the way up. 
and I just thought it looked a little bit better to have something brown there. You can experiment, see what you think, and if you think it's necessary. The next piece that's going to go on is the inside, the bottom of the first step. And we want to get it centered on the path, and which are centered on the doors. And we'll just put some glue on the bottom of the step and put that in place. And I should say, when I put this blue paper on the uh, sides here, that I did use a little ink. I think it was tumbled glass. So, oh, I'm going to put a little bit on the back. I'm not sure if these will touch or not. But... Trying to keep that as centered as possible. And then the front step goes in. And we can put some glue on the top edge of the sides. And the back edge here. Now comes this little guy, which goes up right against that step, so you can put some glue on the back here. And you can put some glue on the bottom edges here as well. Try not to be as messy with your gluing as I was. Then on this top edge here, and then my number two step and there is some kind of writing on this paper I chose, so I'm trying to keep it all facing the right way. I just put a little bit band of glue along the back edge there. And we'll get that centered. It's a little bit shorter than the top step. Now step number three just sits right right here, centered on the other steps. And I put the glue there because it does overhang like the other steps do. And then to put the bottom step in, first we'll put the little riser in. And it just gets centered and tucked all the way back against the wall there. And then finally our bottom step. And we'll let that set up and then we can move on with the rest of our landscaping. <laughs> 